Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 1210 Calculus 1 for students at Southern Utah University. As usual, I am your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misselnheim. Um, in lecture 43 of this series, we're actually going to break it up over two sections. Uh, the, the first part, I actually want to continue about the sigma notation, continue talking about the sigma notation we did in the previous lecture. So uh, this idea of rectangles being our friend actually has nothing to do with anything in this video, but it'll be in the next part. Uh, which is th which is the majority of this lecture content here. Uh, so if we continue on in Appendix E inside of Jane Stewart's calculus textbook, I, I want to talk a little bit more about this sigma notation. And uh, we had talked about last time about um, this sigma operator. We're adding together uh, we're adding together terms in a sequence and how we can find formulas for sums of terms in a sequence. Uh, we talked about things like the sum of i, the sum of i squared, uh, the sum of i cubed. And we gave some hints on how one could actually find formulas for larger powers. Uh, but we're going to stop at just three because that already is quite complicated enough. Um, so that would be kind of like us on day one of derivatives. We learned the power rule. Well, also on day one of derivatives, we, we learned about taking um, derivatives of exponentials. And so for when it comes to the sigma operation, there is a counterpart of such a thing, and this is called a geometric sequence. It's kind of like a, an exponential growth of some kind. So if we have a sequence a sub n, uh, like right here, we say that the sequence of real numbers is geometric if it has the form, uh, what you see right here, a n equals uh, a times r to the n minus 1, where you have some initial value a, so like the first term of the sequence, we're going to call it a. Um, and then there's this constant ratio. Um, th this term is formed recursively by the second term, uh, the second term a2 will just be the first term a1 times it by r, which is just ar. Uh, the second or the third term in the sequence a3 will look like a2r, which as a2 is just ar times r, you end up with ar squared. Uh, the fourth term of the sequence, you're going to get the third term times by r which gives us ar squared times r again, you end up with ar cubed. And then if we did this another time, the fifth term, you're gonna get the fourth term times r, uh, which is ar cubed times r, which gives you ar to the fourth. And so that's where this general formula is coming from. This an is equal to the initial term a times this common ratio r, uh, and you take that n minus one time. So the power of r is one less than where you are in the sequence. And the reason behind that is this, the reason why we call R the common ratio is the following. If we take two consecutive terms in a geometric sequence, take a n over a n minus one, you'll end up with a r to the a n minus one over a r to the n minus two power. And if you simplify this thing, the a's will cancel and we can take away powers of r and the end you'll be just with an r. And so if you take the, the quotient, the ratio of consecutive terms in a geometric sequence, you always get the same number over and over and over again. And that's what characterizes a geometric sequence. So as an example of that, the sequence 2, 6, 18, 54, 162 is geometric. You'll notice if you take 6 divided by 2, that's equal to 3. Uh, likewise, 18 divided by 6 is equal to 3. Um, if you take 54 and divide that by 18, that's equal to 3. 162 divided by 54 is equal to 3. And so the terms in the sequence are always just, uh, their, 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 their ratio is always 3. And that also gives us another way of defining uh, a geometric sequence, is that to get through the sequence, two times, two, times six, 2 times 3 is 6, times 3 is 18, times 3 is 54, times 3 is 162. If you want the next term of the sequence, you'll take 162 times 3, uh, which gives you 486. And then the next term of the sequence, you'll times that by 3, and you'll get 1,458. And you can keep on doing this just by multiplying by 3 over and over and over again. Um, this works with fractions as well. Um, you can take the sequence, the geometric sequence, 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, 1 sixteenth, 1 thirty second, 1 sixty fourth, keep on going. It would be like 1 over 128, 1 over 256 etc, etc. What we do is, as we go from one term to the other, we just multiply by one half. Our common ratio here is one half. Um, the number a, of course, is the first term in the sequence, which here is likewise one half. In the previous example, the first term was a two. 
So recognizing a geometric sequence is that's all that's involved in that. And so what I want to talk about is the sum of a geometric sequence. So let's take SN here to represent the sum of a geometric sequence where you go from I equals one to N and you add up this geometric sequence AI. Well, this would look like A1 plus A2 uh, plus A3 up to AN. That's just what the sum means. And as each of these terms is geometric, you're going to get A plus AR plus AR squared all the way up to AR to the N minus 1. So let's remember this right here. S is equal to this expression right here. And so what we're going to do this time is we're going to take this SN and we're going to times it by this common ratio R. Well, if you do that, you're going to take R times all the things we had before, A, AR, plus AR squared, all the way up to AR and minus 1. And if you distribute the R through onto all these terms, uh, you end up with AR plus AR squared plus AR cubed all the way up to a r in my or n just n right uh, because a times r will give you a r um, a times r r times r sorry try that again r times a r right there gives you the a r squared r times a r squared gives you a r cubed etc and so you end up with this a r to the n right there and so if we put these things together um, if we take the s n minus r sn well this will look like the a plus the ar plus the ar squared all the way up to a r n minus one and we're going to subtract from this the rsn which we see above which looks like ar ar squared ar cubed all the way up to a r to the n like so and so we're going to try to simplify things on, on both sides of the equation. In terms of the left-hand side, you'll notice that uh, Sn and Rsn have a common factor of Sn. If you factor that out, you're going to get Sn times 1 minus R. On the right-hand side, we have another telescoping sum going on here. You get AR canceled to the AR. AR squared cancels. The AR cubes canceled. And the AR and everything cancels up, up until AR minus 1. The things that don't cancel are going to be ARN and then A. And so if we record that down here, we're going to get A minus AR to the N, which if you factor out the common factor of A, you get 1 minus RN left over. And so dividing both sides by the 1 minus R, so we can solve for, uh, so we can solve for the S over there, we end up with the, with the famous formula here, SN equals a times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. And so this gives us a formula for the sum of a geometric sequence, or what we call a geometric sum, where a is the initial term of the sum and r is that common ratio. We're going to use this to try to calculate a geometric sum right here. So if you look at this right thing right here, you take the sum from one, i equals 1 to n, uh, 1 to 8, excuse me. Um, this is the sum 1 half plus one fourth plus one eighth all the way up to um, one over two to the sixth. Uh, what is that? It's one sixty fourth, right? We're trying to add all these things together, which this is like a ratio phobics nightmare. You have to add up eight fractions, all of which have a different denominator. Oh no, what are you going to do? Well, recognizing this is a geometric sum, we can apply the geometric sum formula. Uh, so, for example, we, we identify the first term of the sequence. The first term is here A. And like we saw before with this example, the common ratio is 1 half. 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth. 1 fourth times 1 half is 1 eighth. 1 eighth times 1 half is 1 sixteenth, the next term in the sum. And so if we treat this as a geometric sum, uh, we end up with this using the formula we had before, A times 1 minus R to the eighth over 1 minus R. Uh, we end up with 1 half for A. Uh, we're going to get 1 minus 1 over 2 to the 8th. Uh, and then 1 minus 1 half right here. In the denominator, 1 minus 1 half, that is itself 1 half. So we get 1 half over 1 minus 1 over 64 over 1 half. 1 minus 1 half in the bottom. 
And you'll notice that the one halves cancel. And so you're left with just one over one over 64, which if you want to write this together, you can take 64 minus one over 64, ending up the sum's gonna be 63 over 64, which does provide a much simpler way of computing uh, this sum. Even though there's eight different fractions, we can handle the geometric sum pretty quickly. And I want to make mention that if we were to change this to the, take the sum from i equals one to n, this does not fundamentally change the problem. At the end, we end up with a two to the n right here. We have a two to the n right here. Um, final form, this is going to look like one minus one over two to the n. And that's the sum right then and there. Uh, and so we can compute these geometric sums very quickly with this formula.